So, in today's video, we're going to be talking about the Bitaxe Hex and why I think potentially it might be one of the best miners to invest in currently in terms of solo Bitcoin mining. So, this is even the original Bitaxe Hex, but the efficiency on it is so good that I can't actually get an efficiency better than ones that we see even from a gamma currently, which is strange to see, at least on a board that is quite a bit older in terms of the chips underneath than what is on the Gamma, even on the Zyber 8, the Avalon Nano, and all the other miners that we have, Nerd QXs. I don't know whether it's because of the heatsink doing a lot of work, the fans, double fan system, even though technically it was more efficient with the older fans, which were the black ones, not the Nocta ones. This was just more for them being silent. But after we did our efficiency video where we checked out which ones we were actually going to take off. So we ended up taking a bunch of bit axes off and the Avalon Nano. We actually discovered that this technically is our most efficient miner that we have on all of our rigs. It's even better than the Zyber 8 and technically the Nerd QX and Gammas because it's so steady on the efficiency. I don't know if there's something wrong with it in terms of where they're actually pulling the power from or generating the power figures. We could look into that. But also, I think it's because of this heatsink and the double fan setup. You have very cool heatsink here. It definitely is hashing away because it is registering on pools and on the OS. But it doesn't really seem like I can find anything that's more efficient. So today we're going to be diving into some theories around why this is the best one that we've received so far. Maybe it could be Silicon Lottery, but I don't think that that's the case. But I think this is probably the best budget if you're going for efficiency in a country that has higher electricity prices. This is probably the best budget miner for solo Bitcoin mining that you can find currently in terms of just efficiency. And I don't even think that the upgraded version of this one would technically be better as well. So let's head over to the computer and we'll discuss why I think that this is the best miner to get currently out of all the miners out there. So here we are on the dashboard of the Bitax Hex and we have an efficiency of around 13.87 joules per terahash. The actual average is a little bit lower, but this continues to be probably when I check up on it around 12 to 13 on average. I think it's because we're moving it around then. But the watts that it's pulling is 29.7 watts and these are the overclocks that we managed to Put on there which is 400 and I think this is 1100 technically on the chip. So the weird thing is that we've never really got down to this pretty steady efficiency range of around 12 to 13 joules per terahash. I don't know if anyone is achieving this on the gammas or not but it seems like I can't underclock the gammas, I can't underclock the nerd QXs even with the Zyber 8, it doesn't allow me to actually set a figure. It just times out all of the chips. I think potentially we got lucky with just this one miner. But also, it makes me wonder if it's something to do with the firmware as well. I know when they released the Nerd QXs, they had certain firmware which stopped from overclocking. So there also might be certain firmware that's stopping it from underclocking on a lot of the other models of, you know, the bit X Gamma, Zyber 8 and Nerd QXs. As you can see there, the efficiency on the Nerd QX at current time is around 17 joules per terahash. That's on the default settings, so I'm expecting it to be a little bit higher. But even when we get it down to lower frequencies, we can still only get it down to probably around 14 to 15 joules per terahash. We never really dip into this range that we see on the Bitaxe Hex. So I think there's definitely something going on. The first thing that I would probably rule out is the power consumption. So are we actually pulling that amount of watts? Which I don't know if it aligns or not. So you have 29.4 and that's divided by 6, which gives around 5 watts of power to each chip. I don't really feel like each chip would be pulling 5 watts of power. I know the frequency is a little bit lower, but still, even when you had an ultra chip, so these are based the Bitaxe Hex, the original one, is based on the Ultra Chips, which is the BM1366. And when you run a Bitaxe Ultra, it normally pulls around 8 to 10 watts, I would say. 
or even a little bit above that if you put it down to these settings. So I'm wondering if it's something to do with the power draw. So we could rule that out pretty easily. But you can see here, even the efficiency right there is 12.26, which is way under what these chips are supposed to be capable of. And this kind of looks like more gamma efficiency, super underclocked efficiency for a gamma than it would be for an older generation chip. You can even see it with the BIX gamma that we have here. The efficiency on average is around 16 joules per terahash. These are all on default settings. Even in the Zyba 8, it's around 15.45 with an average of 16. But with the Zyba 8, we can't actually go below if we enable overclock mode. If we start going below around 485, the chips just shut off. So that could be something to do with either the firmware or they need a minimum input to actually start hashing up. Same kind of goes for the Nerd QX as well. If we try to underclock it to get it more efficient, it just crashes out. It doesn't want to hash anymore. It gets up to around 2.5 giga hash, and then the efficiency runs away. And I actually got this overclock setting for the Bitax Hex from one of my viewers. They said that they got really good efficiency with this, and so I tried it out. It turns out that the efficiency was real, but in our efficiency video, when we were looking to maximize efficiency for the rest of our miners, we could never get it as low as what we saw on the BitX Hex. Even though these are way older generation, you've had the Ultra, which these came from, on the BitX Hex, which if we look in the, I believe it's settings or system, these are from 6BM1366 chips, which is Ultra. And then you have the Supra models and then the Gamma models. So you'd expect to be more efficient as you go up the line. But it doesn't look like we could get any of those even close to the efficiency that we saw on the Bitax Hex. So these chips come from an S19XP or S19XP Hydro or S19K Pro. Whichever one it comes from, there is two different types. And the efficiency officially is listed at 21.5 joules per terahash, which is really... I mean, you're saving around 9 or 8 joules per terahash when you're in this super underclocked mode that we see using these underclocks right here. Even the chip temperature is good. It's not really going above anything. It's not running away. I think the heat sink's doing a lot of work, plus the double fan setup is doing a lot of work. I may be wondering now as well if the fans aren't technically recorded in the power consumption. That would make a lot of sense, but even then those fans don't take up that much watts, so it would still be pretty efficient regardless. So if this efficiency is technically true, the one that we're seeing here, so around 12.77 is what it's averaging out at there, that would mean that this is the most efficient miner that we have on our rig, and probably the one that we can actually get the most efficient. As I said, with the Nerd QX, we're obviously on default settings, the frequency we can up it, we can lower it to 500, or we could lower it down to 490 but as soon as we start to do that the core voltage doesn't keep up with the frequency and I think it clocks out so it's not enough voltage to actually power on the chip and then another reason for the bitax hex might be that we won the silicon lottery on a lot of the chips which I don't really think would give us such a good efficiency that we're seeing here so it tends to make me believe something is wrong even when you look at where we got these from which was tiny chip hub you can see that you have a bit axe by here and a bit axe super hex. It'd be interesting to see if this bit axe super hex can get down to lower efficiencies the same as this. So if any of you have one of these and you want to stick it maybe too close to these overclocks or underclocks technically, maybe an ASIC frequency of 490 and then slightly higher ASIC measured voltage. Because right now this is more efficient than even the Zyber 8 the Zyber 8G, the Nerd QX, the Gamma, and the Super Hex. Now, on the website of Tiny Chip Hub, I think there is a couple of other sellers as well that do this. It does say industry leading efficiency as low as 19 watts per terahash, and the Super Hex is at 4.2 over 90, which is only 21.42 joules per terahash. But it is weird to see that we're getting such great efficiency on the Bitax Hex. If we actually take it over, and we go to even the S21, I don't think the S23 is here, but S21 only has an efficiency of 16 joules per terahash overall, 
if we go over to a different website, we can maybe see more figures. So the S23 Hydro that we see here is 9.5 joules per terahash on the efficiency. And we're sorting by efficiency here. So you have 9.5 joules per terahash for the S23s and 11 joules per terahash for the regular ones. And then as you go to the S21 XPs, you get around this range that we are with the bit axe hex and the bit deer miners that you see here. So there's a lot of miners that is technically outcompeting. The only thing that we're seeing here is the bit axe gamma 601, which is listed at 14 joules per terahash. I don't know whether it's the overclocks or something updated in the firmware. We used to be able to get them down that low, but we haven't been able to recently. I don't know whether it's the power supply or something throwing it off, especially with the node Q axes as well. We couldn't get them down to 14 joules per terahash on average. And then if we go down, we have the node Q -X, which is listed at 16 and a bunch more that we can see down here. The Supra Hex, which is listed at 18, which would technically be the Bitax Hex as well. The Node QX Plus is 20 joules per terahash. And the Hydro version is even technically worse at 24 joules per terahash. I don't think those figures are technically right. But then you come down to the Ultra, so the chips that we're currently using, and that lists it at 26 joules per terahash. So another reason why I think this is probably, if these figures are correct, uh, there could be something going on in the background. Uh, some of you might know, so you might be able to leave them in the comments. But if this technically is the efficiency, then it's probably the best one to buy out there. If you have a price of 231, you could get two bit axe gammas for probably the same amount of hash rate that you have here, but the efficiency would also be worse. So overall, it'd technically be better to buy a bit axe hex underclock it to get the same efficiency or better efficiency than two bit axe gammas. And as I said, even with the super hex, if that can be underclocked, it might be to do with the firmware that it allows it to go lower because they might have firmware blocks on the bit axe hex or maybe even the node Q -X. But it leads me to believe that also the super hex has probably the same firmware settings that you see on the Zyber 8 where you can't go below a certain frequency and core voltage which makes it very very hard to do those potential underclocks so when we are benchmarking a lot of our miners to try find the most efficient overclocks or underclocks we were seeing that if we started the Zyber 8 at around 390 it would cut out keep cutting out and then it would actually eventually turn on at around 490 which leads me to believe that there is a block on the firmware along the line that stops it from actually going too low on the frequency and core voltage as it does say custom settings can cause damage and system instability only modify these settings if you understand the risk of running outside the design parameters I don't advocate for you technically underclocking this low in theory, you can go a little bit lower than this and it would probably be way more efficient as well. But these settings are set in your drop down, which technically means that they should be viable to have that as an underclock setting. But we might do some further tests on the bit axe hex to see if we can get it lower. A lot of you might be able to tell me in the comments why we can get this one so low in terms of efficiency, but the rest of them we can't. The main one would be the Nerd QX. We can never get this to even touch on the or below 15 joules per terahash for both of them, even the Parasite and the normal one. The normal one technically should be more efficient because of that copper heat sink that we have on it, but it does hover only around 17 joules per terahash. That's on the default settings. And with the Parasite pool one, if we bring it up here, you can see that the efficiency is the same as well so 17.72 compared to the normal one which is 17.26 so we got a little bit better efficiency on the upgraded heatsink but even then the parasite pool one can't go lower than that and when we try to restart it to actually climb up to a better expected hash rate it stops at about 25 percent away from the expected hash rate that you see there which is probably something to do with the chips underneath and the core voltage that we're setting for them. I'm assuming it needs a minimum core voltage. 
and that's what's really limiting the underclocking ability of a lot of these miners is the core voltage needs to be a certain amount and the frequency needs to be a certain amount to allow the miner to actually start up. It seems to be that the older chips don't actually need that. But if you guys run any of these in terms of the Bitax Hex or the Bitax Ultra, if you could try these overclock settings and let me know what frequency and let me know what efficiencies you get for the Ultra on just on its own, then that would be a great experiment and we can kind of rule it out. But overall, I think it's probably the best one to buy for money at current time. I don't think they're sold in many places either. I believe Decentral sells them, Tiny Chip Hub sells them, and there's maybe one more supplier of them. But overall, we're just making this video to make you aware that it's probably the best one to go for at this current time if the efficiency numbers are correct. And we'll kind of make an updated video if somebody has an ultra lying around that they can underclock to these frequencies and give us an update on if you can get those efficiencies. Maybe it is to do with the heatsink and that's just better than what we can get for a lot of the other miners and the double fan setup is allowing for more cooling on it to make it more efficient. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments and uh, make sure you like it and subscribe for more content like this.